Welcome aboard LRV-01. I'll, uh, I'll actually reroute you back to the uh, downtown tunnel. It's a little more exciting to operate through there. So this may look familiar. This is the uh, West Tunnel portal entrance and we're in the east direction on track 2. So this will bring us to Blair Station. Alrighty, so I'll go ahead and put it into ATO mode. So you'll see an ATO button just under that big red mushroom. And you go ahead and press that. And then you want to confirm that ATO is a valid mode. So beside mode you should see ATO. Perfect. And then what we're going to do is go ahead and press the Departure Authorization Request Systems button, or the Go button. And there you go, we're off and rolling. So you want to make sure that you're pressing that button at least every 15 to 18 seconds to avoid a vigilance infraction. And you can see, uh, just on our TOD, so our Train Operator Display, under the Platform section, it says Next, L-Y-N. So that's going to tell the operator that the next station is Lion. Aside that, it says Final Station Blair. And that would indicate that yep, this is a series of stations that we'll be visiting today. And you can see under skip it says UOT. So that would mean that control has issued a skip command to the train at University of Ottawa. And you'd be making a passenger announcement advising your passengers accordingly. So we're coming to Lion Station and this simulates rush hour service, a packed platform. And as the operator comes into the station, we have them in that Spider-Man, that ready position. And their hand is hovering over the go button, but also the emergency brake. Uh, just as a safety backup. So the train automatically stops at its pre-assigned stopping point. Doors open automatically in this situation. And then we have the operator monitor the CCTV cameras for people who are boarding the train, alighting the train. And these are cameras that are positioned in the station. Exactly. This is piped in live from the CCTV at the station itself. So we are seeing in real time the passenger's behavior as well as that uh, the control center has the exact same video feed. And then here under our departure, it says yes. Our doors are closed and disabled, and we see on our signal box that they are also closed and disabled. So that tells the operator that we are good to go. So we press and hold our go button for a few moments, and then as we depart the station, we're also making sure we're monitoring our CCTV cameras uh, for anybody jumping to that uh, coupled section. So unlike other systems, like say for example Montreal, where they have an automatic train control, in Montreal and most of their, on, on their vehicles, the operator will have to open and close the doors, but auto that will happen automatically on our trains? We have the ability to do both, so uh, either the operator could open them manually at the stations, or the system is also built to automatically enable the doors as well. So right now for the simulator portion, we just have the door set to automatic, but uh, it also has the ability to be set to manual, so the operator would be power opening the doors or enabling the doors just like at the O train where you just press and hold that self-serve button outside the train and the doors would open for you. Okay. And then you can see under the dwell time, it's counting down, so that's how much time the operator has at each station. And then once that dwell time elapses, and the operator confirms on their CCTV screen that it's clear for departure. They would press the go button and then uh, continue on to the next station. And what is the typical dwell time? So on average what we've seen is about uh, 20 plus seconds. That depends on the headway, again time of day, uh, type of service, special events, if the train is held at a station. And uh, if it's a step back procedure, so that's at your end station, such as Tunney's and Blair, it's going to be slightly longer to allow the operator to crew out of the lead cab and then make their way 100 meters down the train to uh, the other cab. Now, the line currently terminates at Blair and at the opposite end at Tunney's Pasture. Correct. How does it work for when trains arrive? Obviously, they're not going to be using the typical platform that they would long term come stage two, so will trains alternate from one side to the other? That's, uh, that's a great question and it all depends on the service and then what's happening on the line and what are the needs. So uh, the controller would be routing the train accordingly depending on what's happening out on the line. 
But uh, with the crossovers, we do have the ability to operate in the east direction on track one as well. So for example, if something was happening at Rideau Station and they had to route the train around it to maintain service, they would have you uh, route back at that switch that we passed over. Oh, that's perfect. So as we came in, we had failed to press our vigilance button, so it elapsed for the time needed. And that's exactly what's going to happen. The, the horn is going to sound and the train would uh, slow down. Uh, so that, that's like a caution? Yeah, so in this situation it uh, tripped our emergency brake. So we'd have the operator call control, explain that they've had a vigilance infraction. And then in order to reset that, you're just going to look to the left of you. Mm -hmm. And that'll clear the emergency brake and reset the circuit. And then uh, you can go ahead and press the go button again, and we should get to our docking position. So does Collins check in to see if everything is okay with them? They would be, yeah. So in this situation, if you had a vigilance infraction and you didn't contact them, they'd be notifying you, contacting you and saying, well, what what's happened there? Okay, so it's the, 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 operator. the operator should be reporting it, but uh, it would automatically pop up on the ATS screen, so the controller's screen that they're using it indicate that, yeah, there was a vigilance infraction. And then let's say all of a sudden there was an obstruction in the track, we would just push the red to stop? Yeah, well, it depends what the emergency is, right? So if the operator has the ability to stop the train in a controlled fashion, so that's to prevent passengers from moving themselves, we would have them grab the traction braking handle, so to your left, and reduce the train's speed accordingly. If, for example, it was a major obstruction and we had to stop the train immediately, yeah, the emergency brake is a great avenue to do that. And then you would depress that emergency brake, you would contact rail control and let them know oops, something has happened. And uh, you'd go from there. So you could put it back into ATO mode. And that's just right there. Perfect. Well done. <laughs> there you go. And then if someone wants to operate the train, the, the operator needs to operate it manually, they would turn it like this? Exactly. You turn it 45 degrees and then you simply would bring the traction braking handle back to give it a moment to set the system into ATPM mode without having an overspeed on the train and then we have the operator put it forward and that's called applying traction and then the operator would operate an ATPM to uh, the next desired location. And it would still follow the track speed limits? It won't allow you to have an overspeed, that's one of the beautiful safety systems built in so even though you try and try and try to push that train to go over its maximum speed, the, uh, the brakes will start to apply. You'll feel the train start to shudder, give you an indication that you are approaching your overspeed. And then if you continue to push the train, it's just going to stop. And I would assume likewise, if you were to get to the end of the track, um, there's safeguards to stop it from overrunning the, the end buffer. The system would never allow you to go past the prescribed stopping location, especially at the end stations for sure. So in this situation, we, uh, we totally blew past the station, so all of our passengers on board are going to be tweeting out, <laughs> saying, oh my goodness, I have to take the train going back. So we'd have the operator, that's not a big deal, we'd have the operator call uh, control and advise them that, yep, we had an over uh, an overspeed at the station. And then we'd also advise our passengers using the boom mic to your left, and uh, just alert them that we did have a station skip, and they'd have to go to Lee Station and then take a returning train. <laughs> So we can go ahead and depart you, Ottawa. We've missed that station today. And you just have to push and hold ATO. Perfect. It goes over here. There you go. And I guess the other simple things like uh, windshield wipers. Yeah, I mean, there's a whole whack load of controls there. So we have the bell, of course. We have the horn just above the bell. And then underneath that, we have our hazard lights. Bes beside that, we have a track brake, and that's a mag brake that drops on the train. So this is a good example of what a, a vigilance infraction would look like. So it slows the train to 25, it activates the horn. When the operator presses the go button, it's going to silence the horn, but we continue at 25 kilometers. So in order to get around that, we can grab that traction braking handle again. And then we can manually operate the train to, in this case, Lee Station. And we'll dock the train beautifully this time so that our lovely passengers can get to their final destinations in a safe and orderly fashion. So as we're coming in, we're going to start to slow our train about here. We're coming in kind of hot. We'll start to apply our braking. 
search and apply our braking a little more. So in this situation, we have an overspeed. So we were coming in a little too quickly. The system uh, dropped the speed because we were coming into a station. Our speed wasn't matching what the new system speed was, so it activated the emergency brake. So in this situation, we can reset the emergency brake by pressing the DEBRR button. There we go. And we can take the train back over an ATPM if you'd like. So manually operate it. And uh, I'll show you exactly how to dock the train beautifully every time. So we'll come in nice and slow. We'll start to apply our brake. And brake is pulling backwards? Exactly. That's applying light braking application. And then you're going to see on your left hand side just affixed to the fence. It should be not this one, but the one just passed. You'll see a little white tag. That's a stop marker ID sign. And we want to line that up with our center window right here. And that's going to give us a perfect stopping point and a docking position. Oh, so we go. So it, uh, go, perfect. So dock the train beautifully. And our passengers the door. are more than happy. Yeah, you're welcome to enable the door for sure. So in typical operation, the doors would open automatically and not. Um, it's been mentioned that in inclement weather or if there's not many passengers at a station that the passengers would then operate the door similar to the Trillium line by pressing the button on the door. Yeah, exactly. So in inclement weather, we don't want to have those doors open and lose all the heat, of course. So uh, above ground stations, we'd have them in enable mode. And then uh, below ground stations, they would be open to allow for quick and easy access. Great. But the ability, yeah, it's, it's there for both. We can either operate automatically or manually and have the operator open and close doors accordingly. So it's a pretty cool system and a lot of, uh, a lot of neat little gadgets. And then this, this panel right here would be to... So that's the DDU, that's the driver display unit, and that's giving the operator a whack load of information about the vehicle, its systems, its operating conditions, its power supply, and uh, it also has the ability to implement missions for the trains themselves. Passenger announcements. It's the interface and the, the operator's guide to uh, really running the train. It provides a whack load of information. 